What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Pal Block NGR Radio's Nintendo Show. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrick, and alongside me, as always, that retro code, Edward Varnell. Do 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 do. Mega Man. Yes. Ed, I don't understand. <laughs> also joining us this week, the co-host of our Xbox show, Arsenal X, Jesse the X Douglas. Yeah. How's it going, guys? Yeah. Glad to be here. Yes. Throwing up the X. Wrong show, but it's okay. Oh, how's everyone doing? Good? Great? Good. Grand? Wonderful? Yeah, just got off of work and uh, happy to be podcasting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, man. Dude, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Dude, I can't believe next Friday I should have my Nintendo Switch. I'm so Woo! happy. Oh, nice. Nice. Yes. Nice. Uh, I can't. I still haven't gone to go get Mario Rabbids yet. That's a shame. <laughs> okay, so, okay, I have it. It's just, it's just not here because I was on vacation last week. And had my game shipped to my parents' house so it wouldn't be sitting in our weird mailbox area thing. So, still have to go over there and get it. It'll be alright. I'll be able to talk about it on Friday. It'll be alright. It'll be alright. Yes. Maybe. If I can... Gosh, Destiny comes out. Well, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, it comes out tomorrow. Uh uh, no, because that Wednesday. I said if they're That's listening right. to this on Tuesday, yes. Ed. Oh. Gosh. Oh, sorry. Just, Look, I. You're I, just like I've my been, wife. You don't listen to me. I've been at work since six o'clock this morning, so. Oh. I'm well, a bit brain dead. No, nah, you're fine. You're fine. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, let's get through this rigmarole. We are doing. Uh, we're we're kind of playing with some formats with some of our shows so so stick with us for a, probably a week or so before i finally get this down uh if you didn't know pow block is ngr radio's nintendo show remember you can find it on itunes google play stitcher shout engine as well as the ngr radio youtube page and ngrradio.com every tuesday and friday at 10 a.m remember to rate us comment subscribe share whatever wherever you consume us it helps us grow and we would really like that, I think. Unless Ed Ed doesn't want to like that. Oh, is that the Lucita do. Amiibo? Yes. I got that one. I got that one the last time I went to the Nintendo store. Uh, let's see. Join the discussion on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Nintendo Power Block. And remember to look for our question block thread there or by emailing us at nintendopowerblock at gmail.com. Also, remember, we aren't the only show on NGR Radio, so go download or watch our family of shows on our YouTube page. Yes. Uh, with that said, what's everybody been playing? Jesse, we're saving yours for last because yours is the most okay. interesting. So, Ed, <laughs> what, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing Near Automata for PlayStation 4, and uh, I was telling Jesse that I just installed Just Cause 3. For PlayStation 4, so I'm going to be playing that a little bit more soon. Uh, finish Horizon Zero Dawn, so I'm doing a new game plus. Getting some more uh, a little bit further in there. My my goal is to run through the game quicker and see how easier that game is. And, and probably pick up some trophies um, along the way. Um, for Xbox, doing Gears of War 4 still on Hardcore. Um, and uh, getting ready to start Far, Far Cry 4. Also Xbox One. Um, I brought it a while back, uh, and I played a little bit on PS3, but I kind of want to play play it on Xbox One because I think it's going to be smoother and it's going to run a little bit faster. So uh, getting ready to do that. And Project X Zone 2, um, I'm getting to that game. It's just loving... Uh, just loving the game at the part where I'm at. Uh, Ulala, our chapter is called Dance Battle. So... Uh, she'll be joining my team, and we'll have to fight the enemies from uh, Space Channel Five. Uh, but we're getting it's getting fun, uh, and really enjoying. Right. Looking forward to Destiny. Unfortunately, I can't get into next week, uh, but I will be picking Destiny Two up, um, and picking up Heaven, uh, not Heavenly Sword, but Hellblade, and um, 
uh, the Uncharted DLC. Trying to be trying to pick that up also. Getting ready to play that. But uh, that's what I've been playing for right now. And then I'll be hooking them up with you up uh, on top of getting ready for the video video games. But yeah, that's all I've been up to. What I've been playing and doing. Nice, nice. Uh, I I platinumed Horizon. Finally finished it. I yeah. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to try to tackle those uh, extra trophies. They added the new game plus trophies. Uh, one, I'm I might go back and do a new game plus and just play through the story mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's one that you have to play the game on ultra difficulty or ultra hard difficulty. And that just sounds terrifying because uh, normal was was hard enough. So, uh, but yeah, I platinum Horizon. I'm pretty excited that I did that. Uh, and then I've been I played a little bit of Uncharted earlier today, uh, The Lost Legacy, and I'm like, no, I need to finish Hellblade before I start Uncharted. And so I switched back to Hellblade. Uh, uh, I guess I guess this is the first show going up that I've actually been playing Hellblade. I made it through the first three areas, the uh, opening area, and then the first two. Uh, kind of, you have to go through these two areas to unlock the door to the gates of hell, uh, and so I just got to the bridge uh, to hell, and uh, the when we recorded. When we recorded this week's Arsenal X and uh, World One One, I didn't think it was a great game, but I thought it had an interesting aspect to it. I thought it was really, uh, you know, they're doing something different and they're doing something unique that isn't really explored a lot in video games. Uh, that changed for me today when I was moving through that second area, and they were doing some really cool. Uh, they had some really cool mechanics in that second area today that I was just kind of like, if you keep giving me more of this, this game definitely for me today went from good to great. Uh, you know, the, the combat is still kind of, it's there, but not really, you know, it's, it's, uh, interesting. It's really simple, but, uh, you have to look at this game more as a puzzle game and not mm-hmm. an action adventure game which is what it's kind of disguised at as so uh if you're looking at it as like a puzzle game with some combat in it uh you know it's it's really cool game and like just the sound the sound the 3d sound that they did in this game is just (laughs) ridiculously immersive and i've been playing the whole game with headphones on and dude it's just it's crazy you feel like you're in her head because you can hear all the different voices like through the headphones like they're in your head but you can hear them like they're different voices talking to you you can hear them the way they're positioned around your head it's just it's insane (laughs) oh it's so good i man this game is super interesting and senua is one of my favorite gaming characters this year i just oh she's just so interesting and the story that they're telling is so interesting and intriguing i'm probably about three hours into the game and i don't i don't think this i think i'm about i don't know how far i am really uh i think the game is only like seven or eight hours i think so uh but it's really good i i'm i'm just loving it i'm really i really am so I can't wait to get, I can't wait to pick it up and play it and join in a conversation. Yeah. Oh, it's so it's so good. Uh so but Jesse, you are kind of the sole switch player this week, uh kind of playing the big game <laughs> of the week. So tell us about this this weird collaboration of Mario Rabbids. Oh, I can't wait. It's it's a lot of fun. I uh um kind of like you first at first it starts off, you know, you're you're kind of just finding your way through. Well, well first they have a really a really really good uh like starting scene where it starts out, you know, you got this girl that's uh 
like an inventor and she's a really big uh, a Nintendo fan. So she's got like Nintendo m- memorabilia all over in, in her room. And and uh, like she starts, she creates this uh, invention that because she wants to try to like resolve issues like the energy issues and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so she, what she, you know, she made this thing that could mix two things together. And so, like, one of the things she does is mixes a, a plant with a light. So then the light energy comes from the plant. And so they, you know, they kind of set up the storyline as to, you know, how everything and why everything happened. And uh, the the rabbits uh, made a, a time machine or like, a, you know, some kind of machine that could make them teleport basically wherever they want to go. And they appear in her room and do what they always do. They trash everything. And and one of them puts this thing on and starts turning, you know, the rabbits, mixing them with the Nintendo memorabilia. And then basically, the you know, they then get back into their machine and they appear in, uh, in Mario Kingdom, you know, in the king, the by the castle and stuff like that, you know, the iconic... Uh, castle and then it basically starts from there and and you uh kind of work your way into the story and and uh like what they've done with the with the storyline is just great and and the battling like you uh you know like if you've played XCOM stuff like that it's uh you you basically you pick where you want your characters to go and then you know each character has got uh, a level, like different levels and different uh, uh, things that they can do, and you can level them up as you go. And uh, the the mechanics that they've done in it, they've they've executed it like perfectly. The like it doesn't feel too like too difficult to really understand the things that you want to do but at the same time uh it is kind of complex because there's a lot of you know you kind of want to think of what you want to do ahead of time and you know before you do it so it's kind of like i i i've been like comparing it to chess like you it's a lot like chess. You kind of want to make sure that you put your characters in a certain, you know, spot and and uh, you know to to make sure that you keep certain characters away and and uh, like besides. So that that's that aspect of it. You have the battling aspect, but and it's and and that's a lot of fun. But what I like is in between the battles, you've kind of got uh, different things that you can unlock. Like you can unlock the the audio tracks, like the songs that you hear throughout the game. You can unlock uh, like special pictures and all that. And so they've got a lot of really cool, uh, almost like Zelda esque. Uh, things that you try to solve and puzzles so it's not only just the battling game they also make it a a really really fun puzzle game as well and make it you know so you have lots of cool things that you can you know can try to figure out and and it and it will better you in some way but it's not a hundred percent you know like super important which is kind of nice uh, you know, like like I said, you unlock certain things, but it can help you with upgrading things as well. And what I like about the storyline and this, you know, just everything that that it's based around is, you know, I was a little iffy at first because you know, at the Rabbids, some of their games, you know, have have done well. Um, you know, in the I think in younger, you know, younger kids and stuff that usually like those kind of games. And so I was a, a little afraid that it was going to be kind of annoying and, and too overly, you know, like goofy and, and just, you know, not not fit as well for everyone. But they did an excellent job of, of having humor in it, but not going overboard with it. And, and the mixing of the characters of the two worlds and the Mario and the Rabbids, they just did an excellent job with that. And they they really made it enjoyable, and yeah, I've been consumed by it since I've got it now. So, 
I played a lot. I uh, played a little Siege today to take a break, but then I went right back to it before we started the podcast and was playing playing the Mario Rabbids. And yeah, um, it's it's definitely probably right up there with Zelda for me. Like I, I can see me just playing this a lot, just like Zelda, wanting to go back to it even after I beat it eventually. I, I'm only on like world three, I think right now. And so I'm just kind of going back. I learned uh, like, that's one thing is you learn new, uh, things that you, you know, uh, things that you can learn. And so then I went, I'm trying to go back and look, look for stuff that I, uh, that I couldn't find, figure out earlier because I didn't have the ability yet. So I'm just kind of doing that right now before I start the third world, I think, and just kind of see see what I can unlock first. So, I, I kind of like that in games, when you get a new ability, not so much a Metroid-style game, but when you get a new ability, going back to a certain world to see how you could use that new ability and what secrets you could find in there. Yeah, yeah, it's and I yeah, it just it it gives you that that replay, you know, that replay ability like where you just you you know, otherwise if you you completely do everything in the first world and and there's no reason to go back, well then it, it almost feels uh like, you know, worthless to I mean, you you know, it served its purpose in the beginning, but this is just kind of a neat way to to go back and and then a couple of things that I'll touch on too that are that are kind of interesting. I haven't really done too much with yet, but any of the areas that you had a battle in those worlds, you mm-hmm. also can go back. And there's uh, the different mushroom uh, mushroom guys or toadstool type uh, characters there. Yes, and you can uh, choose to do ba- uh, battles again there, but they're not the same exact ones that you did there originally. It's a different one, and you can go to those and win the orb things that you need to upgrade your characters. So, so there's there's a lot of reasons they they've given you a lot of reasons to go back into the areas that you've already beat uh, if you really wanna you know level up and and do things quicker without just doing the storyline so they've they've kind of given you that almost that like open world feel where you can kind of go in other places and do things that you maybe you know couldn't before and they give you a reason to to go exploring through the the cool worlds that they've set up so well that's cool that's nice and the other thing, too, that they have that I haven't tried yet, I'm hoping eventually, you know, because I think my friend Pat's probably going to get it, uh, get it as well. Um, they do have, a uh, like, a gym thing that you unlock. Like, after you beat the first world, you unlock a whole bunch of these, uh, like, places you can go to where you can go to buy weapons or upgrade or... You know, there's different places, but there's also a gym you can go to where you can uh, play multiplayer mode with with your friends and go. I think you go through a battles, but you get to work together, I believe. Like you, you'll you know, like your friend, whoever you're playing with will be on one side of the mm-hmm. map and you on the other. And then you kind of have to work your way through the, the battlefield uh getting rid of uh the bad guys i think i think that's how they have it set up i don't like know if co- there is like yeah almost like, like co- I'm a co- I'm yeah a. yep yep and then i i think that's the way that they have that set up and i don't know if there's a there might even be a verse mode where you go against each other i uh, you know which which would make sense because you know that would be like a training like a way to train you know just like a boxer would spar with with someone, you know, you kind of would, you, you know, better yourself by playing against a person versus just AI, you know. So, so yeah, I'm hoping I'll, I'll uh, be able to find out a little bit more about that and what that's all about. But I, I'm just kind of glad that they added something like that because that really, you know, that's the one thing about Nintendo is they've always been 
you know, the system to go to when you want to play co-op mode or, or, or multiplayer, you know, in the same area anyways. So I'm kind of glad they added that. So nice. Nice. Yes. Uh, Definitely go pick it up. If you haven't, if you're listening to this and you have a switch, it's definitely a game you want to get. A lot of people on my Twitter feed has just been talking about Mario Rabbids like all day, like all week long, ever since it's been out. I know. I can't. Uh, I can't wait. This is. Ah. I can't wait. I can't wait to play it. Right. Oh, well, what do you say we get into some news bits? Yes. News bits. The new segment that we're calling news for Power Block. All right, so before we get into uh, Switch news, there's a couple of Amiibo news bits that we need to cover. Shovel Knight developer Yacht Club Games and Nintendo have partners to give us more Shovel Knight Amiibo uh, in the package of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove 3 pack, including Plague Knight, Specter Knight, and King Knight. Who's excited? I think the whole internet lost their mind. Like, they, they look really good. Um, I can't wait to see uh, how they really feel and look in person. They look good, they look good in picture, but like when I saw the when I saw the Shovel Knight Domingo in uh, in like in real time, I was just like, this is way detailed than what you see in the picture. So I can't wait to see how uh how it looks when i get my hands on it so uh i'm super excited to get this oh i know i'm gosh i'm so excited what well, it was probably like six months ago i'm like i hope they do an amiibo for each of the bosses and now they're finally giving us the characters from the expansion oh i'm so excited yes how do you feel jesse yeah i i'm i'm excited about it. i i don't I haven't gotten Shovel Knight yet, but I've been, I kind of was waiting to get it for the Switch. And, uh, once, once I have money for it, I definitely, I definitely want to pick up Shovel Knight because I've, I've watched a lot of gameplay. Um, my, 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 uh, kids watch the, uh, like some of those, uh, YouTube families or whatever on, on YouTube a lot. And they, mm. they've played it a couple of times. And I think that was actually one of the first times that I seen any uh, video footage of it was when they were playing it and kind of teamed up the the husband and wife teamed up and were were playing and and you know they just bantering back and forth. It just looks like such a fun game, and I I do want to get it. I've been wanting to get it for a while, but just kind of money money is an issue. So. But it's definitely a game I have uh, have in the uh, want to get as soon as I can list. So yeah, it's, uh, it's so good. Like I I've <laughs> I don't know how many times I've bought Shovel Knight, but I own it on every platform that I own and it's available <laughs> on. So that's <laughs> something. Yeah, I just yeah, only ones I I don't have it on this PS4 and Xbox One, but I got it like on 3DS and um, Wii U. When I get it for Switch, and then when I get my Switch, I'll get that. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, uh, let's see. The next bit of news is also Amiibo news. <coughs> wow. Oh, bless you. Uh, a Mario Odyssey three pack has also been shown off, including Bowser, Peach, and Mario. But I'm not sure if it's coming west or not. Uh, but it's still cool that they're packaging those three together. And they, yeah, those it's three... coming west. It is. Yeah. All right, yeah. I, I, they would be crazy not to release that here in the West. Mario makes too much money worldwide, and so this amiibo is like gonna be like perfect for to complement that game when it comes out. Yeah, I I want that three pack of the the amiibo. I just love the. Uh... The, the top hats and stuff. That's the one you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. I the, love, the... And I need that Bowser Amiibo. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, I, it's, like, it's awesome. I would buy two of them just to keep one in the case. It's just the one to have <laughs> for the Bowser Amiibo. Yeah. I I have been contemplating whether or not I should get these. And the three pack makes it easier 
to uh, make that decision. I I still don't know if I'm going to get it or not, but uh, just because like I have all the, the Super Mario Brothers one, like the Super Mario pack that they released with uh, Mario Party, and then uh, you know the the ones that came afterwards. But we'll see. We'll we'll see. I'm probably going to. I'm just yeah. I'm probably going to. It's it's. I say that now, but when I see them, I'm just be like, ah! snatch them up. So, uh, what if they drop? What if they drop the rabbits on the same day? Who did you get? If they drop that and what? If they drop the rabbit. Okay. The heck? Huh? Attention! 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 I have no idea what's going on right now. Nintendo Power Block has exciting news. Breaking! <laughs> Breaking news. Um, I don't know if you read this, Corey, that, but I think those the three pack for the uh, Mario Odyssey where we containing with three kingdoms. They coming out. I think they're coming like with three kingdoms attached to it. No, they they revealed three more kingdoms, but oh, I don't. Three more kingdoms. I don't okay. think they're attaching ki- whole kingdoms to an amiibo. I think people would f- flip their minds. Ugh. Okay. But, anyway, uh, moving on to Switch game news. Uh, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle is a hit. Yes. Ubisoft's XCOM style crossover is doing quite well for the Switch getting high scores across all major outlets and uh, doing pretty well for itself. Can't wait to play it. Uh, Also, Rocket League on Switch is running at a smooth 60 frames a second and 1080p while docked. I'm really happy that Psyonix put the work in to make this game run like the other versions. Just just saying. It's uh, a lot of people always say that you know the underpowered hardware is, makes it harder for them to make the game run like the other games, but yeah, uh, I like it when teams take the time to put the work in and, and make it run well. Uh, so it, it's it's going to be exciting to see how that crossplay comes to play. If you could use like Metroid's car, and you just see it in the in the Xbox One version, <laughs> you'd be like. Oh, that looks so pretty. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that's kind of good business because that would be like, this is not in my game. What what the world? Because some people don't pay attention, and th- you'd be like, well, the only way you could get this car is if you buy the Nintendo Switch version. Well, I don't have a Nintendo Switch. Well, you it's available now. Go get you one and go get Rocket League, and you'll be able to get this and get these items and stuff. So I think it's good marketing that this crossplay can do for uh, Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed that they're able that you know, uh, it's just it's crazy because like I was listening to an interview with with Psyonix and they were talking about. You know, they were talking to Nintendo about bringing the game potentially to the console. And they said Nintendo was super generous in giving them whatever they needed. They pretty much just said, hey, whatever you need. And then they came to them about cross-play, and they said, whatever you need, which is, you know, kind of unheard of until recently for Nintendo. Between Rocket League and Minecraft now, Nintendo's just kind of like, yeah. So, it's pretty cool, though. Um I'll probably I'll probably get Rocket League for Switch. Um, yeah, I I was waiting for Rocket League for Switch. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna get. Like I was actually waiting for Wii U, but it never came. So now that's coming to Switch, I'm definitely gonna be able to. I'm definitely picking it up. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, how do you feel about Rocket League for Switch? Uh, it's another game that's definitely on my to get list because I uh, again I. You know, there's a lot of games that I was going to get on Xbox and just didn't because I had planned on getting a Switch and just kind of wanted to get some of those kind of games I feel would be better on the Switch. So, And I think Rocket League would be one of those games that would just feel better on the Switch, I think. So yeah. just to be able to, you know, it's a it'd be a fun game to play to play handheld. So, yeah. Ah, yes. Can't wait. Ah, it's yeah. great. 
Uh, more Switch game, uh, more previews than than news, but Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Fire Emblem Warriors, and Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Switch Edition are all getting great previews from outlets, making a strong case to buy something other than Mario this holiday if you're looking for uh, games. So Yeah, I, I heard that Skyrim on Switch was just like, yeah, you put that same amount of time in the other versions, this is probably going to double it. Like, they were super impressed with this game. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, oh, uh, that game is just jaw, jaw dropping gorgeous. Yeah, that game. I can't wait. I cannot wait for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I was reading some previews about it the other day, and it said this mm. is this is a hardcore JRPG. Uh, it has new like new gameplay mechanics but feels like an old school rpg where it's super hardcore super uh in-depth and i just oh, i can't wait man I I, I I i can't wait to get into the world and grind but i really want i'm i'm looking for the art in, in those moments to be like there's no way that you guys were able to do this and be shocked that they did it yeah like i can't i cannot wait for that uh, i can't i can't wait for fire Emblem warriors either Oh, uh, I they don't said, know how many hours they said they're applying again. they're applying the mechanics of Fire Emblem and keeping true to the franchise while making it an action game. Mm-hmm. What? Ah! I'm sorry. I'm just I get really and, yeah. And, and for me, I I didn't have a Wii U, so I, there's a lot of stuff that I that I uh, that I've heard people talk about for a while and just really haven't been able to try yet. So. Like Xenoblade and a lot of that stuff, I um, this will be my first time like really getting to experience it. So oh, it's gonna be, oh, it's gonna be great. Xenoblade, oh man, I can't wait for, I can't wait for any of these games. Yeah, I because I've watched a bunch of stuff on Xenoblade and it looks amazing. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited for it. Still, still looks like it feels like Final Fantasy Nine a little bit. Uh, I can't wait for to walk around that city in the sky or. Or any of the... Oh, I just can't wait. More Switch game news. Telltale confirms that Batman Season 1 is coming to Switch. Yes! Is coming to Switch before Enemy Within, as well as Guardians of the Galaxy and more ports, quote, eventually. Uh, I think the Switch is a perfect system for the Telltale games. Oh. So. Yeah, me, yeah, me and you have many discussions on this. And when you told me that news... I, I I am super stoked that that game is coming because it it I played it on Xbox One and it's really really good and to have that collection on the go like while I'm on break at work or I, I when I go on my train ride to Indiana or Ohio or wherever to have that kind of game to take all that time oh yes I I'm super stoked so excited <laughs> yeah ah uh, man. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, all right. So, also last week, this is the last part of the news bits. Uh, the Nindy showcase for False 2017 was shown uh, last week with some confusion about some of these games, but uh, all these games are confirmed for Switch in the near future, which has me really excited. Uh, so, I'm just going to list off the games uh, Shovel Knight, King of Cards. Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, No More Heroes, Travis, Travis Strikes Again, Super Meat Boy Forever, Mom Hid My Game, Golf Story, Floor Kids, Wolverblade, yes. uh, Poly, Poly Bridge, Earth Atlantis, Next Up Hero, Steam World Dig 2, Mulaka, Yono and the Celestial Ele- Elephants, uh, Dragon Marked for Death, Battle Chef Brigade, Morphe's Law, Sausage Sports Club, Light Fingers, and Nine Parchments. Uh, so those were the games shown during, uh, or some of the trailers were released after the uh, Nindy Showcase uh, on their YouTube page. So uh, Shovel Knight's obviously number one on my list. Uh, I can't wait for that. Uh, and then No More Heroes. I'm. It looks like an interesting twist on No More Heroes. Yeah, so uh, on this one with No More Heroes, uh, Travis Touchdown gets sucked into, I guess, to possess 
video game system. And so it'll be like mini games, but other indie developers are creating the mini games. So, uh, and Travis, and I guess the, the girls that you kill, her dad, uh, who came to take revenge is going to be also in the game too. That's my assumption. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the 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 twist too in this game is that it looks like Travis touched down and the uh, the guy who attacks him uh, they get sucked into all these different games uh, and you have to battle your way out. And they did confirm that there is a shovel knight level uh, that you have to <laughs> battle your way out, which is super cool. And he was playing Hotline Miami, so you can probably guess that that game's going to exist somewhere in there, too. Um, yeah. But... Uh, golf, golf Story looks very cool. Uh, it's a mix of golf and RPG. Like, it has a dark story to it. And I was just like, how in the world is that going to work? But I'm super stoked to play it. Like, very interested in playing that. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. And then... Uh, Steam World Dig Two, obviously Steam World Dig was a was a big hit when it came out, and now that they're making a sequel, uh, it's gonna be super interesting. Morphe's Law looks weird and kind of cool. It's kind of what is is it? It's a fighting game, right? No, it's it, a, a multiplayer. Oh. So it's four and four. And what the base what the basis of the game is is that you are going to be a blue enemy or a red enemy, and what your goal is is to take their mass away from the body. So when you hit that uh, your opposing team, their body is shrinking down. Your body is growing big, and you gotta like, kind of defeat the other team to get your bit your avatar to the big. Whoever gets to the whoever has the biggest avatar in the end wins the match. Um, while you're growing big, it's easier to hit you, but if you're growing small, it becomes more difficult to hit. Uh, so uh, right now it's four. It's just they just says four and four. I don't know if there's any other colors, but it was just red and blue. That was what they showed in the trailer, um, and this is running on Unreal Engine, so uh, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, man, Dragon, I, what? Uh, Dragon Mark for Death. That's the new uh, anti creations. The people who made Gun Vault. Um, oh, really? That's their new game. That's their game. So it's a two uh, D sprite. Uh, it looks like three player game where you play a rich, a hunter, and a mage. I think, uh, and it's an RPG style game. Uh, six, it, I think it's 16 bit graphics that's the way they, uh, they look it looks but I'm really interested in that when they said it was inside create and then I heard Gunvolt I was like ooh yes <laughs> yeah you said Gunvolt sign me up uh, man there's so many cool little indie games I'm interested in Kentucky Route Zero too because a lot of people yes. a lot of people have a lot of good things to say about that game and uh, since the final episode is coming out and they're releasing the whole thing on Switch. I might check it out. It's like a story. It's kind of like a story-driven choices adventure game. Adventure game, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, looks cool. And Super Meat Boy Forever looks cool too. But uh, not as interested in it as I was beforehand because it's a continuous runner instead of just a straight-up platformer. Yeah, uh, I read. I read that. Uh, I think that. Did they announce it like just a few days ago that it was in this runner? Like they didn't announce anything after they showcased it. Well, they like... sh- they uh they showed the iOS version, which is uh they they showed the iOS version like a year ago, I guess. Uh, oh, okay. And so this is just the port of that, and like the iOS version is obviously going to be a a continuous runner. It's going to be kind of like Super Mario Run or the Rayman games for phones. Uh, yeah. Where they're going to be split up into levels, so it's not really an endless runner, but still, it's uh, kind of disappointing. I would have rather just had a straight-up platformer or then port Super Meat Boy, uh, the previous version, over. But, <sighs> oh, well. I mean, I'm, I'm still going to check it out. But uh, any, of the, any of these games look good to you, Jesse? Um, I kind of, 
the thing is, is I, I've uh, heard about them mostly just through you guys, like through listening to the show and stuff, you know, shows and stuff like that. I haven't really gotten a chance to look too much into stuff. So, but um, trying to think of some of the ones that, that I heard talked about that, that I was interested in. There was, there was like two of them that sounded really interesting. I can't remember which ones they were though now, but, uh, was it uh no of course it's not gonna be mom hit my game where no the... no yeah that one uh that one just <laughs> parents do not want to play yeah. that they already try to still trying to find their keys where their kids hit it from so... yeah yeah I, uh, yeah that when when people try to like go out of their way to come up with some weird like thing like that to try to make a game out of it just it just doesn't interest me and i i can't imagine that that it would interest enough people to even think about doing that. <laughs> but right. then again, that's just me, but I don't know. Yeah, it just doesn't sound interesting in the slightest to me. But Well, I was thinking of picking it up if it's cheap, you know, just to see, you know, if I'm like, would this be a game to recommend? You know, I, I'm interested in picking it up just yeah. to get a laugh at yeah. it. Yeah, it's like... I. I guess yeah. If if it's got some kind of something to it that makes it enjoyable, even a little bit, or you know, has something to it. But mm. like uh, to me, when I when I hear something like that, it, I just think of like those games that they make for for PlayStation, where it's just an easy platinum, and it's just really you know, like just basically a uh, just a really small indie game that that basically is just built for you know repetition or whatever i don't know that, that's just to me that's what it seems like just from the title you know and the the like what you know what you're supposed to be doing in it but i don't know i guess I, that's the thing is i don't i don't know a whole lot about these games i do have to look into stuff a little bit more here with the indie games because if there's any you know really good ones that that someone makes i'd like to support them so well um uh next up hero uh, have you played Scribble Knots, or do you know about Scribble Knots? Um, trying to think. Is that it was a the DS game where you had to write like a noun or something, and it comes to you so you can solve a puzzle. Pretty much, okay. you could pretty much you could like write whatever kind of thing you wanted to use as a weapon or a vehicle or something, and it would appear okay. on screen. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I... I haven't played that, but I believe my nephews had that, and I did watch them play it once. And they like, yeah, you can draw different things to try to get get through the levels and stuff like that too, or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like platforms yeah. or. Well, uh, next up, hero, uh, the executive producer who made like Scribble Nasa and Drawn to Life, uh, him his he like he made this company to make next uh, next up hero, and it's just like. You play as this hero, and if you die, you'll get a new hero. But if your new hero gets to the the one that died, it becomes AI and helps you out the uh, adventure. Oh, so it's okay, kind of like cool. a role game. Yeah, and then it keeps yeah. going on and on. I'm like, yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's kind of uh, not too not top down, but it's like on that 3D plane almost. In okay, a sense. yeah, and I, I believe. Yet. I believe that was one of them that you had talked about that that interested me because I remember that now because uh, I can't remember what it's called right now but there's the one game that I play occasionally on Xbox where you've got like uh, the, the different uh, characters and when you die you start over again and then you have to pick a, an ancestor of that character and like each character has different... Uh, like something that like abilities or one might have more HP than the other one or, mm -hmm. you know, or one of them you can only see in black and white or, you know, or it's colorblind or, you know, there's just like weird things that they have. And that's kind of what I thought of when, uh, when you were talking about, about this, it just kind of that, the idea of, of when you die, it's not necessarily completely done. You know that you've you kind of start off with a new character and you know and and kind of keep on you know working towards your goal. So. Yeah, 
Yeah. And then I know uh, Europe showed up like six more gangs that uh, like they showed Our Boy, uh, Game Call Way, uh, but they didn't showcase those in um, in this one right here, in in this game. Uh, one that you might I think one that you might be interested in Jesse is Nine Parchment. By Frozen Bite, it's kind of almost a gauntlet style, uh, top down RPG. Okay. Hmm. So, I mean, if 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 that's the same kind of game that you that you looked at Xbox One, when you watch the showcase, that'll be a good one that you I think you'll be into. Okay. Yeah, I definitely will have to watch that showcase and and kind of look at the stuff that they got out. So. Nice. Yeah. Well. What do you say we move into the question block? Yes. Question block. <laughs> Remember to be a part of the conversation. You can join our Facebook group and look for the question block thread or email us at nintendopowblock at gmail.com and we will try to answer your questions to the best of our ability. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> our first one comes from Todd Oxtra, a friend of the show from Secret Friends Unite. Uh what genre would you like to see better represented on the Switch in the future? Can I please go first with this one? Oh, boy. <laughs> I guess. Yes. Um, I would love to see fighting games really represented on this system. Uh, we only got Archer Street Fighter, and that's cool. People picked it up. They, it, it doesn't have any lasting appeal and you know how deep arms is people are enjoying that game but i i would love to see some good old school 2d arcade fighters come to switch it, it feels good to be right next to somebody who watching it and to be able to take out that joy con and give it to them and feel like they are playing some of the console arcade experience right there you know, the, your fighting is not doing being done online. Your trash talking is going to be right in front of me and right in front of you if I want to trash talk. And so I would love to see the fighting genre to be really big. Of course, we got the Neo Geo games, but I would like to see new independent or even some unreleased Japanese arcade like fighting games 2D come to the Switch. Yeah, nice. Fighting games need more. Uh, man, I don't even know what genre. Gosh, I mean, they've got, they have so many covered already. Like, Zelda's kind of like a action-adventure slash action-RPG now. Like, plat, we've got platformers. We've got a huge RPG coming and, and more to follow. You know, we've got a couple square RPGs coming and, and or already there. Like, I Am Setsuna's already there and Lost Sphere and... Uh, Project mm-hmm. Octopath Traveler, I'm assuming, is going to be some sort of RPG. Uh, we've got Splatoon, and and assuming Metroid Prime 4 is going to focus on, you know, a little bit of shooting. Like, we've got shooters, we've got sports games coming, we've got... I mean, there's, there's so many genres already that it's kind of hard to s- say what we need represented. Um... I'm thinking more along the lines of like maybe racing games. I mean, I would like to see F Zero and I know Gear Club Unlimited for for people who like Forza and Gran Turismo. That game's coming to Switch. Oh, that uh, looks so good. You know, I'd like to. I'm thinking more in terms of like <laughs> what franchises I want to see on Switch, mm-hmm. but like, I mean, racing game. I'm not really a big racing game guy, but like, there's not a lot of racing games on Switch at all. I mean, we got Mario Kart. I think is it right? Uh, yeah, and um, um and the, what's that? The, Neo, the, yeah, the, uh, the FX one. Uh, Fast Racing Neo. Right, and then I guess I guess re- readouts coming or read out is coming in in October. But um, I guess like we don't really have any Metroidvania y type games at all. Uh, you know, Axiom Verge is pretty much going to be the first one. Yeah, uh, I mean, Gunvolt has some aspects of that, but it's more of a, a Mega Man uh, type game and not really a, a Metroidvania. I mean, there is some ex- exploration. Um, uh, what a, what about mascot uh, platforming games? 
like that kind of 32 bit old school mascot. Yeah, I mean we could, in, but we're gonna we we have Shovel Knight. We are getting Mario Odyssey. We're getting mm-hmm. Ukulele at some point. Like we kind of know that those games are here and and coming. Uh, you know, we have Shantae. We have uh, what was that other one? That Wonder Boy, and that yeah. the other remake is coming soon. The Monster Boy and the something something something. Uh, and we got Sonic uh, Mania, and Sonic Forces is coming. Uh, I think we, the biggest, you know, I, the biggest. Missing I know what one. they're missing. What are they missing? <laughs> they're missing the survival horror. <laughs> they don't have, you know, they. I mean, they have that's like true. one one Resident Evil game coming out, or that that one that's coming out, and that's about it. That's true. Like, I I'd love yeah. the I'd love the like the zombie U type game or something to come or or like like make some kind of style game like condemned like where it's just or even even like th- that hello neighbor is coming out to uh xbox i mean even if they did something like that where it's like you're you're you know you're creeping through a building and and kind of things jump scares and things like that but you could still make it for kids like that hello neighbor game is like basically for kids but it, at the same time it can be scary because you're like you know you get kind of struck and uh and the uh you know like it's it's like a survival horror game but but it's for kids almost so I, you know, I, I think that's really what they're missing. They, other than the Resident Evils, they really don't have anything like that. Well, shoot, that's kind of like every system out right now. I think Resident Evil Seven was the last survival horror. Well, yeah, in a, in a sense. Yeah, but but at the same time, I you still got like your your the psycho, you know, like the ones you know like where it kind of messes with your head and they've got a lot of that kind of stuff on on PlayStation and and you know the psycho thrillers or whatever you want to call it you know the what is it the until dawn and things like that that they've got you know on PlayStation and and they've got stuff kind of like that for uh you know for Xbox you've got coming out soon the uh, you know state of decay 2 and stuff like that like those kind of things that the, Nintendo doesn't really have that. So, so you think like something like Outlast should be on the Switch? Yeah, something like that, or or if the or if Nintendo makes their own version of like State of Decay type thing, like where you know they've got their own you know just horror type genre that they could just kind of have as a as a IP. You know, yeah, I'll buy the game and then ship it to Corey. And be like, you have to play this game because, <laughs> I mean, I have a feeling that the game will get shipped right back or shipped in quickly to GameStop. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, Zombie U did you know that Zombie game eventually they released it on Xbox and PlayStation. If I remember right, it did not do good, so it, it did well it's because they took the I aspect know. out of the game that made it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I mean, if they were to do something like that again, because you know they they gave it a try and it seemed to work for them. Which I'm kind of surprised they took that out of the Xbox One version because they have Smart Glass technically. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. game could have worked with Smart Glass, but I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, that game was really built for the Wii U, and it just I, I actually really liked Zombie U a lot, even though I hate survival horror games. Like, not. Not from a gameplay perspective, but from like I just don't like being scared all the time, <laughs> ever. Well, it, actually. It, it's it's funny that when it came out for Xbox One and PS4, everybody was just like, "I would rather play this on the Wii U." They were just like, "They don't want to play this on a controller." Like it doesn't give them that same uh, impact of being scared or being you know like nervous or and stuff. They were just like. Something about the Wii U version just makes you like you want to jump and make you want to shake because yeah. it's because well, it's oh go ahead Jesse well I was gonna say and I I kind of was thinking about the, the kind of thinking about this because I had seen that this question you know the other day 
And I was kind of really thinking, well, okay, let's say Nintendo did do a survival horror type game, you know, like kind of, I think if they were to do it, though, they'd go more the the Resident Evil style of having puzzles and things you've got to solve. Well, so what a, they what have, they... Uh, they have the one from Tecmo uh, with the camera, uh, Fear, because uh, they had the Black Maiden one that came out on Wii U. Okay. Like they teamed up with Tecmo for that one. It's the one with the ghost, and she takes it with the camera. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. have they have stake in that. So okay. Um, you know well, they could. Oh, go ahead. Well, and I, like what I was thinking was like more along the line though of like having you know like in in Resident Evil you've got like the the certain things you've got to move or, or things like that. But what if, what if they uh, almost took some of the, the ideas that they had and, and believe it or not, the one to switch game where like to, let's say you want to open a, you know, you want to open up a um, crack, a case, uh, the um, what's it called? Uh, the code on, on a um, safe. And like you would have to use the 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 Joy-Con, uh, you know, to like to do to to solve certain puzzles, and you know, in a certain way, in order to unlock certain things in the game, and you know, and fa- move your way through the storyline. Like I think with the you know the Rumble HD and all the the kind of neat things that they have. That that the uh, Joy Cons are capable of, they could really use to their advantage to have a like that much more of an immersion into the the game that you're playing. Like if you're doing something like that. Well, yeah, that kind of be cool. The Joy Con is used like a uh, almost like a flashlight, and yeah. the actual power of the Joy Con is your flashlight. So. Yeah. If your Joy-Con is getting low on battery, your flashlight's getting low on battery. You need to charge it. Yeah, yeah. If they if they just yeah, could, I mean, there's a lot of really interesting things. I just feel like with with the way the Joy Cons are set up, that they could really help. You know, that immersion in into the like really feel like you're doing stuff in the game. I mean, it's not you know, it's not uh, VR, but but I mean. I still think that it would it would just give you a lot of neat ideas for someone who would make a game like that to be able to do, and maybe really, they, you... maybe they need to speak to Konami and get Silent Hill back on it, like exclusively on Switch. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, they, I did, mean... they did it on Wii. I'm like, why not? Why not bring Silent Hill to uh, Switch. I mean, you already bought Bomberman R, and it made you money. It made people really like Konami be like, okay, this is the old school Konami that I could get behind. And I think there are people who miss the Silent Hill series. So if Nintendo could get them, get do that, and Nintendo <laughs> Konami have worked well because of Metal Gear Solid on, uh, on the GameCube. So why not get that partnership back why not, you know, help Konami get back in the spotlight of being a good publisher and developer and do that? Yeah, I think the internet would blow up if, if Nintendo announced that they're going to be bringing, uh, bringing that game back. <laughs> I, right. I and, honestly think it would go over pretty well. And they could bring and mix it in with Eternal Darkness. Maybe. Uh, anyways, uh, we have another question that's similar to the one we just answered, but different in just one little aspect. Uh, with the success of Mario Cross Rabbids Kingdom Battle, this is from longtime fan Megan Green, by the way. Sorry. Uh, with the success of Mario Cross Rabbids Kingdom Battle, what mashup slash genre do you want to see Nintendo team up with next? So third party developer and a first and with Nintendo. It's basically what what developer, what fr- Nintendo franchise, and what genre. Ah oh, man, 
Hmm. Mine's kind of a cop out. I I have one if you want me to go first. Yeah, you yeah, go, go first. ahead. I don't cuz like <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know a lot about it like I said earlier, but and you you've kind of said how much they're similar. I wouldn't mind seeing uh uh, Xenoblade uh, Final Fantasy crossover. Yeah. Like, like, like something where, like, even maybe Xenoblade happening in the, the, the Final Fantasy world versus, you know, I guess either way it would work, but, but just, you know, just having an, an, a JRPG where you can play with characters from, from both, almost more like a, maybe a, even more like a tactic the final fantasy tactics t- style game yeah oh, that'd be cool it's tactics well style. I, I remember project x zone the first one they had the pokemon in it or you know was it pokemon it, it like that was like a crossover it was like uh pokemon and something with nevco with the fire emblem t- with the fire emblem characters they had it in Oh, the uh, the Pokemon Conquest with Nobunaga's yeah. Am- it was no- Nobunaga's ambition yes. was yes. the crossover, and it was like a tactical RPG with Pokemon. G. Yes, hmm. yeah, I remember that game. I had that game at one point. I don't. I have it. I just didn't finish playing it. <laughs> Ed, did <Yes>. it <clears throat> did it cross over well? Yeah, yeah it, was, actually, it was a cool game. It was an interesting okay. premise. It worked really well. Uh, let's see. I want to see... Hmm. 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 Let's see. I want to see... I really want to see a Fire Emblem action RPG. Like Top Down? No. Like uh, like almost like Horizon, or like Horizon. or Zelda even, but like you have like pro. I was gonna say JRPG because that might work a little bit better, but I also want to see like the I want to see the I want to actually like have action in it. So I'd go action RPG, keep all the relationship elements in it, keep and build your party. Uh, as you move through the different uh, locations, uh, who would I want to develop that though? Hmm. I don't, I don't know who I'd want it to develop, but I'd like to see a Fire Emblem, uh, maybe Final Fantasy Fire Emblem crossover. Uh, I think that would be kind of cool, actually. Mm-hmm. Fire Emblem Final Fantasy crossover. Uh, or like square RPG characters in general. Maybe like, cause you could have like Chrono Trigger, you could have Kingdom Hearts, you could have, uh, you could have like Xenogears, you could have Saga Frontier, you could have the Bouncer. Remember that PS2? Oh yeah. Beat em up oh, game. Yeah. Game was awesome. My first yeah, PS2 yes. game. Really? Yep. Got my PS2 and I got Madden 2001 and The Bouncer. I think <laughs> my was uh with my PS2 was Final Fantasy 10. Cuz I had got the slim uh when I got my PS2. Hmm. 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 Um, I think that'd I, be cool though. Like I, ah, that's great. I think Codename Steam, but done as an adventure game by Telltale. Hmm. 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 And and just re and I mean it, yeah I know Codename Steam did kind of did well uh, because then I, I'm like if I gave Codename Steam to Capcom they're gonna make it Monster Hunter and I kind of don't want that in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to see Codename Steam come back in some way. It was a cool idea, but it was also, yeah. I I actually would like uh, Treasure to take on Star Fox. 
I would love to play a 2D four player Star Fox by Treasure. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. <sighs> huh. Or or even uh Wario and Waluigi and get two more characters and do straight beat 'em a uh, beat 'em up game. Like a Mario Brawler. <laughs> yeah. And they're just robbing coins and stuff. Mm. Like the goal is to rob the castle. <laughs> <laughs> why uh, why would that work so well? <laughs> why why do I feel like that would work well? Because it would be hilarious. Like you, like Wario would grab the grab, grab enemies and do the shake them for that shake Wario shake game. It did throw. Them. <laughs> uh, we do, we do need some kind of Wario game though, like a game based off of him that, you know, that's a action adventure type game would be fun. Yeah, like uh, Wario World for GameCube. Remember that, Jim? Yeah. 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 It's awful. Uh, all right. Our next question comes from Sam Hall. Uh, do you think it's possible for Switch to outsell the Wii U in its first year? Yep. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If they get enough, if they get enough units out there, I think they totally could outsell. It all depends on how many units they produce and how well they market. You know, Mario and Zelda this fall and Mario Kart. You know. But they ha- they already have the library to outsell it, so. I mean, I, I, it, it's going to depend on the holiday, Christmas holiday. I don't think that they'll outsell the Wii U in this for, in this year. I think they'll they'll definitely will do it by next year. I don't think they will sell it outsell it out this year. Um, once stocks once once you once stock become like available almost every week. I think that's when they'll start selling it, selling more than the Wii U. Yeah. So in other words, in other words, them not selling it out in the first year would only be their own fault of just not not being able to get enough stock out there for people to get. But I, I do think they could have done it if you know if it was more readily available. And, and you and you got to realize that Wii U had the white and the black, and so the external hard drive part I think was out the gate. But people were just like, well, if I get the black one, that's the deluxe version, and there's more benefits to it. Instead of if I get the white one, it's only like eight eight heart eight gigabytes, and I need an external hard drive. Where Switch is like, do I get the red and blue one or do I get the black one? The only difference that's between the two is just the is the Joy Cons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and the and the blue and red one is like it feels limited compared to the uh, gray ones. Even though that the Switch, that blue and red one is kind of representing what the Nintendo Switch uh, look is. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it depends on the holiday, and I think it depends on how many units they can get out by then too. Uh, but yeah. I I think it's possible, but it's gonna take some work to do that. But I mean, Switch is great. Everybody should own one, so go buy one if you can. That's that's all I have to say. That way we can say yes, yes, it can outsell the Wii U in its first year. <laughs> uh, our last question comes from our friend Mohammed. Uh, is it time for Nintendo to pull out some dormant franchises? What do you want to see? Um, I know we we talked about Eternal Darkness. We talked about uh, you know, I talked about guys. Um, I would. Uh, I talked about Uniracer. Like, I would love to see like a Kid Icarus game in the style of Breath of the Wild. Uh, that'd be hard to do. I know, but I think it would be cool. Like, I I don't think Kid Icarus needs to stick to the. The genre of the NES versions. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, yes. I think the 3DS version was cool, but I think they could, if they could, like, really kind of reinvent what people think of Kid Icarus. I mean, like, mm-hmm. not that it's going to take that long because people probably, a lot of people probably never even played Kid Icarus. Uh, you know, and a lot of modern gamers, their only uh, connection to Pit is, like, the 3DS game if they picked it up or 
Smash Brothers. So I mean, it wouldn't really take a lot of work to do that. I, I would I would go even back old school and go over to the black box NES games and talk about Kung Fu, like bring that out to Switch. And <laughs> you are like, reaching deep into these these bags of uh, of of I don't dude, even know. Dude, you have you have uh uh the garbage the garbage go uh no what is it um. Because you, I had you got Donkey Kong Three where you were the hunter and you had to jump up the stairs to get Donkey Kong into oh. the bees. You have that one, uh, like I mentioned, Kung Fu Gyromite. You have that. Uh, you have um, Wrecking Crew. Wrecking Crew. <laughs> oh, heck yeah, Wrecking Crew. Uh, what what was the urban uh urban fighter or something like that? Oh, uh, they tried to do that for we, um. Uh, but yeah, wrecking crew. You had like, if we're gonna go dormant, we gotta go back to the NES black box days. Yeah, it's either that or like one thing that I could think of is, I'd definitely like to see a new Excite bike. I'd like yeah. to see them. I'd like to see them like, you know, really have fun with. With the the better you know the har- better hardware and and try to make because the last one was Excite Bike sixty four right? No, Excite Bike for a Wii. Oh, they did have one for the Wii. Yeah, they had the Excite okay. Bike for Wii. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, it'd be cool yeah, because be you could have hold the Joy Cons like a uh, actual <laughs> motorcycle. Yeah, and that, lean them like you drive it. Yeah, and when you twist it, it would accelerate. You could yeah. twist it and accelerate. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Hmm. Um, RC Pro Am. Well, yeah, I I loved RC Pro Am, um, but actually, uh, Rat Racer. I'm sorry. Gosh, uh, Rat well... Racer. <laughs> Technically owned by Rare. Oh, is yeah, that's a Microsoft Thank property you. now. Yeah, yeah, and so is, is so is RC Pro Am. Isn't Wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be cool yeah. though if like that's on the Rare replay? Wouldn't that be cool if if the next Forza Horizon had a Rad Racer expansion? Oh yes! Ah, uh, that'd be cool. Oh, we should have Ra- said that for Arsenal X. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think. The Rad Rad Racer is that is that just a regular racing game, or is that the one where you it's a platformer with a car? No, no it's a regular racing game. Do you know? Do you know? I can't remember I think it was what Blaster, that one is. Blaster Master is the platform. Blaster Master is the, the car. Yeah. Okay, where it's a car and you're driving on on platforms and you jump from one to another. Okay. Yeah. And then okay. when you leave out, you're going into the dungeon. I mean, because there's a Blaster Master for Switch. Okay. Okay. So. I'll have to check that out, maybe. I there, like that game. There was one of them that was like Space Harrier. Uh. But it was for Nintendo, and it had like a 3D kind of style effect to it, and okay. I cannot think of it. But you can switch it. Like if you want to hit uh, go into 3D, you hit the select button, and then if you want to just play originally, you hit the select button again. It's just a style of space area, but it's not actual space area. Okay. Um, yeah, but I'm with you on the Kung Fu though. I'd lo- I'd love that. I still play that all the time. Kung Fu have- on regular NES. Yeah, you have Duck Hunt, uh, and this yeah. actually can't shoot the dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because we we had, they've they've never made another Duck Hunt, did they? It's just that first one, and that's it, right? Was it, yeah. What if, and what if they, they made Duck Hunt in the vein of Breath of the Wild? No, <laughs> you're an adventurer going out with your dog, shooting ducks. Every time you sometimes go into a forest, you see monster a cave. ducks. Sometimes little just... bokoblin ducks. Sometimes just little <laughs> squeaker ducks. Hold on, Breath uh, of the Wild style. When you find <laughs> when you find treasure, does it go? Did 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 did? Yeah. <laughs> or if you get knocked down by a duck, the dog just points and laughs at you. <laughs> yes, nailed it. Nintendo, you can have that one for free. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like that 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 side game that they released for the uh, or was it Wii where where you got the uh, 
the um, gun thing that was supposed to be like a bow, bow or whatever that held your Wii, your oh, Wii like remote. Link's, Link's yeah, yeah right? the Lynx thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I just thought of, though? Speaking of old NES games, we need a new Excite bike. <laughs> In the vein of Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Uh no, you're an adventurer. <laughs> that, going that out pretty, in the that's wild lands. Hold on, look. That's just wild lands. No, no that's driving over the horizon monsters, right there. Driving over <laughs> monsters, hunting monsters, throwing your bike at them. Dude, that's that's Forza right there. Horizon, excite bike of the wild. Oh wow! <laughs> Tony no. Hawk Five, pro skater. <laughs> Can I tell like you that game, Can I tell you that game is still sixty dollars at retail? What game? Tony Hawk Pro Skater Five. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well. Sure. That's because no one bought it, so they figure if someone really does want it, they can get the full price for it. <laughs> uh, I think Mario Paint would be a cool game on Switch to bring back. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. It would be kind of fun, you know, and just being able to to uh, use the Joy Cons to do stuff, and you got all the buttons on it. You could switch, you know, between your paints, you know, paint styles and colors, and do all that right on the on the Joy Con. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Hmm. What other games do we want? Uh, trying to go back. I know. Uh. Well, not really Star Tropics, but goodness. Nit- like, thinking of Nintendo, like, published in first party games. Of course, uh, of course, Punch Out. Like, good yeah. Thing get. yeah, give me a Punch Out. Yeah. Give me a, yeah. give me a Punch Out that's kind of like Fight Night where there's oh! like RPG mechanics. Corey, that other question. Punch Out want? and Ready to Rumble. Cross yes. Over. Yes. Yes! In the vein of Breath of the Wild. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that, but that seriously, they awesome. That one I can't accept. Oh, that would be awesome. I mean, just going box, no, just Bokoblins. No, just a boxing game, not, not in the vein of Breath of the Wild. But like, oh, like a cool boxing game where like, be awesome but uh ah, that'd be awesome but i do want to punch out that wii one was pretty solid but i want like a a new one where you can train your boxer and there's like mm-hmm. 50 bosses that you need to take on and you have oh, like a real goodness. franchise career mode type thing and yeah well not and not to mention i feel like the uh the sensor thing in the in the joy cons is just so much better and would be much more better equipped for it. There better be Little Mac uh, DLC for arms. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, they have to. That's that's a given. No, uh, they won't because it's too obvious. Um, but I think I think that's I think that's it. I think our ideas are out in the wild. <laughs> 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 oh man okay uh but i think that's gonna wrap up this episode of uh nintendo power block remember you can find the show on itunes google play music stitcher shout engine as well as ngrradio.com and ngr radio's youtube page like subscribe and share if you're watching the video rate comment share if you're listening to us in your earbuds we would really 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 appreciate it if you rate us it helps us grow it helps yes. helps the whole NGR Radio project if you subscribe. I just, yeah, do it, please. I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Pow Block goes up every Tuesday and Friday at 10 a.m. on your podcast service of choice. Uh, remember, you can join the conversation at facebook.com slash group slash Nintendo Pow Block. And you can email the question block at Nintendo Pow Block at gmail.com also remember that we love you Jesse where can we find you on the internet 
is muted. Jesse, you're muted. You can find me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> The kids keep on coming down here like every two minutes, and I gotta keep on muting it so there's not like yelling and stuff going. But yeah, I, I'm on Twitter. You can find me at sub underscore humanist, and um, on Facebook, just Jesse Douglas. Um, you can add me on there on Facebook if you want, but otherwise, I'm usually in the uh, NGR radio community and uh, just posting stuff and commenting, liking. All those kinds of fun stuff. So, nice. Ed, you guys can find me on Twitter at That's Retro Code. You can also hear my podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast apps. Even on here on NGR Radio, you guys can check it out. Um, you can uh, check out my series, The Moment, on skirmishfrost.com. You can read Optional Opinion on IGN.com under Anime E N I M E. Getting ready for the video video games um, next week. Our very own Corey Derrick is going to be the first episode guest talking about handheld games oh i literally want to do a part two with you man like, i know we gotta do that soon maybe yes. we'll do it maybe we'll do it after the recording on thursday of pow block maybe we'll just move right into it ah oh, yes yeah uh jesse if you're free that day you could come on too and talk about handhelds if you if you have experience if you know uh yeah i had the i had game boy and and uh I had this the Game Gear, um, and DS, and 3DS for a while. So, ah. so I've had had most of them. The only one I didn't really have is the uh, Advance Game Boy. So, yes. Well, also but, everybody, um, you'll be able to hear Jesse on Optional Opinion because we're going to be talking about Spirits of the Way in the coming weeks. So do check that out. Also, um, check out Arsenal X where I have been. Uh, promoted as host so do check that out I want to hear what you guys think about the show hopefully you guys do enjoy it uh, and all our other shows uh, Nintendo Power Block, NGR Radio uh, uh, World 1 1 Podcast and of course Nerds Gone Platinum and the Brew Review <laughs> 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 yes so uh, but yeah and if you guys want to check me out I, I only got my Wii U so optional opinion if you guys still want to game with me right there um, check out the Power Block uh, Facebook page where um, after the show uh, by the time you guys hear it my 3DS code will be up and when I get my Switch I will also put that up uh, for you guys to uh, you know, write it down <laughs> yes so but yeah um, and then check out uh, my Let's Learn series on Twitch at the Lyrical One and also, hey, let's pod and play here on NGR Radio on YouTube where we play and podcast about games. We got new episodes coming so you guys can check that out also. Um, and hopefully I'll be getting some reviews up for some games coming soon. Yay. Yay. Uh, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can find me at Corey in UHD on Twitter. You can find me at Corey in HD on Instagram and Twitch. Uh, I'm going to start streaming some more games soon, uh, especially with Destiny coming out. It's going to be a, a big streaming uh, game for us. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere. NGR Radio, Arsenal X, 411, Pal Block, all those fun, fun, fun shows. And uh, yeah, check out, check out our family of shows. Uh, you know, the shows that we're on, shows we're not on. Uh, Nerds Gone Platinum, our PlayStation show. Uh, join all of our Facebook groups if you want to be part of those conversations as well. I uh, did a little revamping of the Facebook groups last night. Oh, and, and one more thing, everybody. Uh, join our uh, NGR Radio Creative Corner. Uh, we want uh, we want you guys' creativity. We want to know about your podcast or getting into podcasts. You know, you guys are part of... Uh, of this community, we w- want to help you guys out with your creativity. So yeah, join it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, I think I think that's uh, gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, we love you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Woo-hoo! Yes.